Hey everyone, today I'm going to share with you my first impression of Shining 3D's latest product, Einstein Vega, which is an all in one wireless 3D scanner, meaning that it's a completely standalone device that doesn't need to be connected to any outlets or rely on any intermediary device or software. But first of all, I want to thank Shining 3D for kindly providing me with a you need to test and review. The package that I received came with a bag containing the device itself along with a silicone rubber cover that not only gives you a better grip but also provides further protection for the device against damage. There is also a calibration board which I will show you how to use later in the video a USB-C cable for charging the device or connecting it to a computer, a tripod that looks very steady, and markers to add on top of your object for better and more accurate tracking for your scans. The user interface is easy to navigate and beginner-friendly in order to capture accurate results. It's recommended to calibrate the scanner every seven days. To learn how to calibrate this device, I definitely recommend you check out their YouTube channel which has a very detailed and well explained process and tutorial for how you should calibrate the device to have better tracking of your object and definitely more accurate a scan overall. I will drop the link to their YouTube channel in my description. This device has two separate lenses that offer you two different scanning modes that you can choose according to your needs and the object you want to scan. HD mode is for smaller and more detailed objects. To use this mode you have to be very close to the object that you are scanning and the process is a bit slower. If you want to scan larger objects fast mode is definitely a better option for you. For this video, I'm using the HD mode to capture all the skin details. In the settings, you can also choose whether you want to scan an object or portrait. A scan is always perform better when there is enough light in the environment. So if the room is dark, to compensate for that, you can increase the camera brightness or the exposure and also turn on the LED light on the back of the device which is kind of similar to the flashlight on your smartphones after i was done with the scanning process i uploaded the mesh to shining 3d cloud and downloaded it in obj format on my pc as you can see the scan has captured not only the overall forms of the face but also the tiny skin details which can be very useful later in the workflow a scanning hair in HD mode is a bit tricky, but you can scan hair in fast mode with no problem. So it suggests that you scan your subject in both HD and fast mode and then merge them together. But to make this model usable for production, our model needs to have better topology and UV. If you're a character artist, you definitely know this. And so, so we have different approaches. We can either retopologize the model or we can use a base mesh that is already available for example meta human base mesh and then use a software to transfer all the data from the scan to that base mesh for that i'm using wrap 3d's zbrush plugin to transfer the data to the meta human base mesh which I use for most of my models. I've already explained how to use Wrap 3D in my previous tutorial, so you can go back and watch some of my older tutorials if you're not familiar with Wrap 3D. But after we're done with us uh, with the process of transferring the data and after the cleaning the model and adding more details in ZBrush, it was time to work on textures. I decided to use one of the V-Face packs from Texture and XYZ, which 
comes with albedo and displacement maps and also a utility map if if it's useful to you i had to use wrap 3d once again to transfer the textures to my base mesh after that i use marie to clean the textures and add some makeup to the face and i'm exporting all my maps from Marie in 8K format for the albedo I'm exposing it in 8 bit. Now it was time to add hair to the character using XGen in Maya. Once again, I have multiple tutorials on how to use XGen in Maya. You can go back and watch some of those. Basically the process is very similar. It's one description for the main hair, which is the long hair. For the facial hair, we have one description for the eyebrows one description for the upper eyelashes and another description for the lower eyelash, eyelashes and after the hair grooming process was done finally it was time to render the scene in Maya using the Arnold engine I'm using a 3090 to render the entire scene using Arnold the resolution here is not super high, it's just enough to see all the details and have a better look at the model. So if there is anything we want to improve on or refine, we can go back to ZBrush or Marie to refine the textures, to refine the model. But so far I'm happy with the result. My first impression of Einstein Vega has been very positive so far. Usually it takes me days or even weeks to capture all the facial proportions and details by using only reference photos but having a 3d scanner has made my entire workflow a lot faster and more efficient so if you're a likeness sculptor like me or if you're a character modeler if you want to scan maybe people around you to use for your characters even if you're making custom characters these scans can be very useful for me it's invaluable to have all these proportions exactly the way they are so i don't have to you know use hundreds of different reference photos from different angles of course you have to have access to the subject to take a 3d scan of their face if you want to scan you know your family your friends people around you it depends on your use case for me it was for this project was very invaluable so I'm very thankful my first impression has been very positive the current price for this model is 2000 USD which is not cheap but I would say considering how much time it saves you as a character artist it could be well worth it so it definitely depends on your use case and you have to decide for yourself if it's worth it for you or not. Once again, thanks to Shining3D for sponsoring this video. I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.